As was mentioned earlier, I am Bruce Sterling, the co-author of Trans Real Cyberpunk. And it's a uh, pleasure to appear to support a Kickstarter project with so much truth in advertising, because this book is very cyberpunk and uh, intensely trans real. I'm sure the first thing on your mind is, you know, how did you, Bruce Sterling, manage to put up with Rudy Rucker for 30 years and nine stories? And I think it's important that I explain that. You see, Rudy's a visionary, and he's a real visionary. He's the only cyberpunk writer who ever taught science in universities. So that means when you launch a sci-fi idea, Rudy, something like, so Rudy, how about infinity and beyond? Rudy's like, oh yeah, infinity. Yeah, there's actually like several different kinds of infinity and they all have specialized Greek names. Or you could say, Rudy, what about the fourth dimension, the fifth, the sixth? And he'd say, well, you know, there's 18 dimensions and some of them are so tightly rolled up that they're smaller in diameter than a proton. So he's quite a useful guy in that regard. So uh, Rudy Rucker is a guy whose life has really been an intellectual adventure. Even though he, he looks like the sort of guy you'd meet in a bowling alley, he's truly an extraordinary figure. And the nine stories we managed to write don't, they're not the same experience as the 90 stories we discussed writing and could never get onto the page. Nobody's ever imitated stories like these. We ourselves couldn't imitate it. We couldn't even write these stories the same way once. They were unique encounters. And they are works of genre fiction. They appeared in genre magazines, but they're truly strange. And they're, they're strange in the sense that like William Burroughs, Girdle, Escher, Bach, uh, Stanislav Lem are strange. I mean, these are two professionals, science fiction writers, really working together on the nature of strangeness. I mean, what is reality and what does it mean? What does it feel? What do the revelations of science have to do with this? So we struggled and we learned from one another. Most of these stories are pretty good in the sense that they are readable. A couple of them are surreal train wrecks, just really exciting verbal disaster areas. Uh, number nine, the last one in the story, which is called Kraken and Sage. It's only in this book and in no other book. It's actually a pretty good story in my opinion. I think it's one of our stronger efforts. Uh, we seem to be leaving on a high note here, which is uh, pleasant to see and uh, you know, a thing that gives me a sense of happiness about this collection. Uh, you know, and to kind of sum it up after a few decades, I mean, this is a book about the intellectual troubles that cyberpunks have. And you might wonder what those are. I mean, you're cyberpunks, okay? Why do you make such a fuss for such a long time? Is it politics? Is it class? Is it race? Is it nationality, gender? Is it a generational thing? I mean, what really seems to be the trouble? Well, this book is really about cyberpunk reality trouble. There's like more of that concentrated trouble in this book, I think, than in any other work I had anything to do with. And if you support this project, I think it's, it's evidence that you get it and you sympathize. So uh, thanks for your attention. I, I hope you enjoy the book.